Dover Athletic are a team in the Vanarama National League South. Despite being famous for its white cliffs, this football team is predicted to finish dead last in the division with the team above having odds half of Dover's. And financially, this side has no money either to improve the side to avoid relegation. And there's only one man who could take on this challenge to take over Dover as the worst team on Football Manager. No. It's not me. Instead, it's my dad, who optimistically signed four players, with one of them being unknown to try and survive season number one. And in true Omega Dad style, three of the signings were goalkeepers, and one of them is a striker. Of course, as well, he has created a mad tactic that the Vanarama National League South has probably never seen before. But before we question his wild style of play, let's ask him his thoughts on this season and the whole challenge he has in front of him. Do you think this tactic can keep you up, survive this season? I've got no choice, mate. That's a tactic I had to go with. Is it? <laughs> it looks a bit weird, like you said, but um, my best player is the winger. So yes. he, he had to go in. So then I was just making best of what I had left in the team. And uh, that's it. I mean, the striker, Hutchinson, he's, he's not brilliant, but he's good for this league. Well, that's who you signed as well, isn't yeah. it? That's who you brought in on a well, free transfer. Yeah. He's good pace and off the ball. Ability. I mean, that's what I needed, really. So hopefully he scores the goals for me to get me out of this league. I mean, uh, that's the challenge to getting out of this league. Yeah. And then getting to the Valorama League. So yeah, um, yeah. when I took the team over, I never even had a keeper. So and that's why a... you signed three. Well, yeah, I, had a get... I got I got two in very quickly. And then, then one of them decided to drop off into the the under 18 because they never had a goalkeeper no. either, so I'd get another one in but, uh, but you had Noah Phillips in on loan from Leighton Orient he's yeah. a good goalkeeper for this and although this is look looking wild and you do have one of the worst teams in the league the silence that you've made have made an impact yeah Definitely. Because so far, five wins out of six. Yeah, I just don't think anybody can work out what I'm doing, so... <laughs> Not even we can. <laughs> no. You just need to keep up with it. Mm. See if you do it. Dad's form started well, but tailed off around the winter period. But his side continued to get results when it really mattered, all the way to the end. And they finished the season only behind Yeovil in the league. But second place is only good enough for a playoff spot. And after coming back from conceding in the 80th minute against Eastbourne in the semi-final to win win in the 96th minute it was into the final of the playoffs against Chelmsford who scored first on Dover's home ground through Zorro but just before half time Shea Hutchinson popped up again for an equaliser and in the second half the momentum stayed with Dover as not only did Alan Bagger second but George Nikaj came up with a third to comfortably win promotion for the club well congrats play a final win in the first season I'm really pleased with that I didn't think I'd do that well the first season I mean when you look at the league table I was I was second nearly the whole season yeah so to be like that I mean that's really good I mean, there's no way I could touch Yo, I mean lucky you they were just there for the whole season and they I, were somewhere ahead of yeah. you as well they only lost one game all year to Dartford yeah uh, by far like 25 or 22 points ahead of you in the league but you were still made a gap between yourself and Chelmsford yeah. I mean, who finished was, in third place yeah it was the two of us that was you know go, running away with it because I had a I had a rocky patch as you can see by the, the graph there and I lost quite a few games all in a row type of thing and, and then I, I just picked it back up again you had two patches pulled, really yeah. October and November was a little bit rough but you yeah. kind of picked it up during November I was getting November. draws there though so I was yeah. getting points still so that was yeah. the main thing But and like one of those losses there was to Yeovil in the FA Cup yeah, I think everybody in the qualifier there. Yeah, but as you say, they were beating everybody. Yeah. Apart from you there, and you got two injury time yeah. equalizers <laughs> away big, from home. That was a big is, point for us. Yeah, which is quite good. And then you had one bad patch at the end of the season yeah. in April when you're like, oh no, don't yeah. get bad for oh. now. You even lose to Chelmsford City yeah, at and they, home. And they were chasing me really big then. But then beat them in the playoff final. So when fantastic. It, when stuff. I needed to beat them, I beat them. So. Exactly. Yeah. The guy that you brought in, Shea Hutchinson, got you 31 goals this oh. year as well. So that's, fantastic signing yeah, that is. That's, that's the big signing for me, really. He's, yeah. done, he's done the job for me, really. Not one of the three goalkeepers. <laughs> but you're going into an even more difficult league now. Yes. And I think it's the hardest league to get promoted from. Definitely, because the, the difference between the two leagues... Are, when I was looking at it was you've got some teams in here who are professional teams yes professional players who are paid day in day out to, to, to train and my team just turn part -time up part time players <laughs> yeah. I'm on weekly contracts yeah. and that's the thing that I found really hard I was having players that are on weekly contracts you, you, you try and approach someone and they're signed for you and, and then you sort of think 
what happened to them? And they decided to move to somewhere else. Didn't yeah. They? They're on a weekly contract. They didn't want to play for anymore. Yeah. They just get up and go. Mm -hmm. See you later, boss. I've had enough. I've had a better offer. And working with that sort of just really baffled me. And I was just thinking, what am I doing? doing? Yeah. yeah. So that was. it is a really hard challenge when you're in the lower leagues. Okay. Well, the challenge as a whole is to take this team as high as you can go. Yeah. God knows where that is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's, let's have a look what you do in season two. Yeah to get yourself set in the Vanarama Nash League and survive once again. That surprised me this summer as he didn't bring in as many players as I thought he might, but he did bring in some quality attackers such as Aaron Blair. He, alongside a new attacking midfielder in Charlie Ruff and a second striker, Jordan Greenidge, are already starting the season on very good form. Two very good strikers coming in yep. for the National League. Uh, Aaron Blair being one, 24 is very really good. Uh, this one's fast as yeah. well, left-footed. Good options there, as well as, obviously, another goalkeeper, which is an improvement. And Charlie Roth, yeah. as an attacking player, gives you a lot of options. That's meant a bit of a change in a style of formation. This is more me formation, really. Yeah. You know, I do I do like a narrow one. Very, very hard to play wingers, isn't it? So um, yeah. I got I got Ruff in to bring him in. I brought, and then I brought him into the, into the middle a bit more. The two new strikers. So the way I'm looking at it really is, I'm hoping that the defence is good enough. And then when I do go forward, I can either go bombing forward with four or back into three in the field or five in the midfield. That's what, oh, that's so what your, your style of play, the the, the the tactic, as it were, to survive in the Van Arama National League is to attack. Yeah, definitely. Not to yeah. be attacked nope. is to attack. Yeah, definitely. The Kevin Keegan style you're, you best, absolutely Best love. form of, of defence is attack. Yeah. I also noticed Alan, your star winger last year, is transfer listed. Yeah. That's trying to get some money. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what I was trying to do, but found out very quickly that no one wants to buy any of your players and they nope. when they when they feel they're not good enough, they just leave. Yeah. And go to a team below you. Totally. Yeah. So. But you started well. You've only lost one game so yeah. far this season, Altrincham. Uh, you drew with Yeovil, who obviously came up with you. So that's a good start. That's a, a good tale of, you know, all right, all right, we're feeding our way. Yeah. But you're beating the teams that's been in the league previously by quite a lot as well. Yeah. Older shot 2 0, 3 1 against Ebb's Fleet, Barnet 3 1, and a Maidenhead 4 0. Yeah. I mean, I mean Maidenhead I... do quite well to stay up, to be honest. Yeah. But a 4 0 drumming of a team above you is great. I did look at it with the Yeovil game being the, the tester for me, really, because, like you say, they came up with me, but they come up easily above me. Yeah, they so were they better were team than you last me, so year. I improved my team and I got a result against them. So I felt that I had a, a half-decent side now. Yeah. All right, it's promising then. It's promising that you'll probably stay in this league at the very least and who knows, maybe cause another upset. As many predicted Dad's Dover team to struggle, the shock to all of us was how well they continued to perform. And on the final day of the league season, Dover beat Oldham 1-0 to swap places with them to finish in the playoffs. We're in the playoff first round where Yeovil, who also managed to qualify, Charlie Ruff scored a winner in the 121st minute. But that's unfortunately where the run came to an end against a very good Halifax team and there was no trip to Wembley. Well, it's an unlucky one in the yeah. semi-final of the playoffs. The fact you got there, I think, oh, was the biggest achievement. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I didn't think I'd get that that far into the league, so I, I was really pleased with it, even though I lost. So Yeah, and uh, the crafty final day of the season, yeah. <laughs> knocking Oldham out of the playoff spot by beating them, yeah. I think is absolutely perfect. I mean, the drama of it, because you lost the, t the previous two, two going yeah, into two it. Games, so, yeah, it looked like I chucked it away for the playoffs, but um, yeah. won that last game lucky enough against a team that needed to beat me as well. So And then defeated Yovo, the team had come up yeah. with you, after extra time, yeah. in 121st minute. It was like it was written in the stars. <laughs> and, it, and it was Charlie Ruff as well. Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, and they missed a penalty as well to go 2-0 yeah. up early on. It was kind of thrown away by Yeovil. But that is really promising. Yeah. Because the, your first like season in there, I mean, even the season preview, look, 400 to 1. Once again, they're completely writing you off. Yeah. And you've gone completely against the grain and managed to get to the playoff semi-final. Now, Sonny Holmore's kind of ran away with the league. 100 points there. Bromley went up with them. And I always like the fact the second place does go up yeah, in this I league. Mean, they I feel to. sorry for them Yeah. Uh, when that does happen happen but you were there or thereabouts dad 75 yeah. points it's a great season and the two strikers that you brought in got 13 and 19 it's yeah. not like mega amounts but it's enough it's enough for that league yeah definitely yeah jolly rough will what oh, a signing that was never a good sign in there so yeah two good signers in two seasons i've had really you know yeah. and then it's sort of paid off really so pleased with that one well it's all about adding on to it you've got a bit of a trans budget not much of a wage no. business as usual this summer for Dover Athletic with how close dad came last season he didn't bring in too many new players with a goalkeeper and a new centre-back coming in as well as Rafferty Pedder who's a fantastic new midfield option to utilise 
defense. Along with a classic 4-3-1-2 style formation, Dad's Dover side got things off to a great start, with massive hopes of going one step further than that playoff semi-final defeat last season. Yeah, it's been an unbelievable start to the season. Oh, the first game of the season, I right, pulled 6-1. I thought, yes, get in. We're on our way. We're going. Yeah. And to keep, keep it going like that, I'm really pleased with this. Yeah, I mean, Charlie Ruff hat trick again. He's continued his form from last year. Yeah. On top of, obviously, the, the new signings that you made, yeah. bulking that midfield out. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, the centre midfielder that you brought in, uh, he's playing more of, the, of a central position, Pedder here, instead of in that role, because we know Charlie Ruff has got that role nailed down. Yeah, definitely, yeah. He has just come in and, and just been excellent as a box-to-box -box midfielder for yeah. you instead. He's already got a 7.62 average rating across the last five games. I mean, so much more. Wages are quite big for it for, for this league, but he's definitely worth it and it proves that from the results I'm getting already. Yeah? So, yeah. Absolutely. So, it's a fantastic start to the season. Yeah. It's whether you can continue and, and kind of piggyback off of last season's luck, but take it one step further. Yeah. Well, I've made the defence a little bit stronger, better keeper. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. Absolutely. Let's see what happens after we hear from today's sponsor, Manscaped. It's time to get serious because today I want to help spread awareness of Manscaped's testicular cancer campaign. And to do that, I need to tell you about Manscaped's brand new We Save Balls initiative. And that's an initiative I can really get behind. I want to save my balls. As should you, but did you know one man every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? And it is the most common form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. That's my age bracket. And with April being National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, our friends at Manscaped have partnered with Testicular Cancer Society to help spread the awareness. And you can also visit manscaped.com forward slash TCS to learn how to check yourself for the early signs of cancer as always. Not to mention, of course, the promo code OMEGA gives you 20% off or free shipping of all products on manscaped.com. Because these simple routine checks can be made while you're having your little trim using the low mower 5.0 ultra because if you're going out of your way to go down there and trim the boys anyway then you might as well spend the time to mooch around to make sure you don't have testicular cancer now the lawnmower 5.0 ultra does have two interchangeable skin safe technology heads including the new foil blade to go smooth to the skin and it's waterproof to allow you to use in the shower for that extra bit of privacy now in addition to providing the right tools and solutions for comfortable and easy grooming Manscaped is committed to raising awareness and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer. Uh, that is why they will be donating $50,000 to the Testicular Cancer Society, help save lives and balls, and go into manscaped.com forward slash TCS and share in their funny educational check yourself video. Go have a look. It's quite funny, actually. And while you're at it, as I mentioned, grab 20% off and free shipping when you use code OMEGA to get yourself some brand new Manscaped products. Because like a famous American philosopher once said, take care of your chicken, your balls, and your mentals. Back to Dover Athletic, you're having a fantastic second season in the Vanarama National League. Because despite being 600 to 1 favourites for that league title, they spent 60% of the time at the top only falling behind Alden near the end of the season. But a hat-trick from Greenwich puts Dover in the final of the playoffs this time round, and it's off to Wembley. And on this day, Dover were a very lucky team to defeat Hartlepool 2-0 with both goals in the second half, one being from the penalty spot and the other being an own goal, but it's promotion nonetheless. You were very lucky to go up through the playoffs, yeah, definitely, considering yeah. oh. how long you were top of the league. And also it being Oldham. Yeah, they come back and bit me, didn't they? Yeah. Badly there, you, were, yeah. you were seeking revenge after yeah. knocking them out of the playoffs last year on the final day. They kind of, yeah, jumped you at the end there to, to go up in that one automatic promotion. Most of the time, I was having good times and all that. And I'd lose two or three games or something and you'd be back there again. But the last couple of games of the season, I lost it badly there and they just took over me at the end. Yeah. So it was just draws. There's you had dra three yeah, draws in it, yeah. a row before the playoffs. And that's what that's what done me, really. So, yeah. But like you say, yeah, I got into the playoffs. Won the final, so I'm chuffed to bits, mate. Tell Didn't you. even concede a goal in the playoffs either. No. It was Jordan Greenwich, who was the top scorer of the league as well. Three goals in the semi-final, got, got himself a hat-trick. And then at Wembley, your yeah. first time 
at Wembley is a big victory I'm against gonna st- Hartlepool. I started the season playing Hartlepool and I'll finish the season playing Hartlepool. There we go. So now you are class as a football league team. Which yes. For Dover Athletic is absolutely huge and it only took you three seasons to get up there. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. And the to hard, do it. Hard work starts now. Absolutely, because there's not going to be a lot of money involved whatsoever. It's going to be very much scrapping again with what you've been given. And to be fair, the overall balance is good. So the finances of the club, they're not being silly with it. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was asking them for more money and they were just saying no. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, but things like now it's time to ask for better training facilities, yes. better youth facilities, yeah. because you don't want to be left behind when you get up th- the leagues. I'll tell you another thing I was looking at as well is staff around me. Yeah. To improve them to as well. Start improving the staff. You need- and asking for more staff yeah. too. Because oh, really I asked for a technical coaches. director and they said no to that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, hard, it's very hard when you go from the non-league to the football league when you haven't been in a structure like that previously. Yeah. There's all the things you've got to consider as you go up through the league. So let's see how you cope. Well, the club made the right moves to cope in the league above. The club definitely needed to become a professional team this season, and that's exactly what they did. And to host the demands of the Football League, their stadium seating capacity was also increased by 1,000 seats. The squad itself also seems to new improvements coming in with some free transfers and a couple of very good loan signings, especially in the striker position. And a leader at the back in Sonny Bradley, who gives Dover a wealth of experience. Not to mention, he's also an animal from set pieces too. Got a bit more defensive with the tactical style, obviously yeah. dropping the attacking midfielder into a halfback, but you've improved the strikers, which kind of like balances it out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got four good strikers now, I feel, yeah. for two places really. So just in case I get any injuries, I'm not sort of panicking straight away. Um, I went defensive because I just don't know this league and I don't know what the teams are like that I'm going to come up against. They're going to be professional teams. I'm going to be half and half sort of building, coming into being a professional team now. Yeah. So I thought, right, just do it as a defensive team and, and let's just play the season out really and see how it goes. Yeah. And hopefully I do, I do stay up yeah. and take anything else as a bonus. I do think you are learning as you're getting you're going along because you've got the, the four defensive minded players here, yeah. which will then create again a back four, but you're getting your whip from your winger and that centre midfield on attack almost sometimes creates a shadow striker or yeah. a third striker, along with a ball winner, who we know his job is not to really bomb forward, but to, to be the, the presser in there. Yeah. And the box to box, which is a bit of both. Yeah. I'm actually really liking this tactical style, to be fair. Uh, and it's led to what I would say is actually a good start to the season. You're not expected to beat Wigan Athletic in the no. EFL Cup. You're not expected to beat a Bournemouth where you don't really want to at this point in the EFL trophy but in the league you're unbeaten that's a good start that's a good start yeah I was really pleased with this two all against Mansfield who have not been in your league well the, the previous league anyway Cheltenham great win Good result against Oldham. Another win against Oldham <laughs> yeah. after obviously that they won the league last yeah. year. Forest Green a good draw and Burton Albion That's six three result. just shows that you're still scoring a lot of goals. Yeah. And Sonny Bradley, who we know from being an XR goal player, yeah. loves a header from a corner. Got himself a hat trick from yeah. centre back. <laughs> yes, good. Name. So good start to the season. We can even see like the likes of Pedder, who you brought in last year, is still getting involved and is still a good player. Uh, in this league because he is getting involved and and causing a little bit of trouble. So survival is obviously another uh, thing that you're going to be aiming for this season. By the looks of it, you might be okay here. Yeah, that's what I just want to survive. Let's get used to this this, uh, league and then let's build from here. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's see what happens. The jump into the Football League might be too much for Dad's Dover as they really struggled in the first half of the season. And after leaking so many goals, Dad brought in another quality centre-back to help out his defence and to try and stop losing so many games. Not to mention, he also changed the tactic during January as well to prevent dropping back down to the Vanarama National League. And both of those changes had the desired effect as losses were a lot less frequent, turning them instead into points. Well, you highlight a weakness. Yeah. You were Conceding too many goals. You brought Brad Hills in. Good, good on signing off in January. Yeah. yeah, good signing off out, really. Helped me out again. Great centre back, and yeah. it might have actually kept you up and survived. I mean, after December, you had a bit of a ropey end of the season. Yeah. So there's a 7 6 in there, too, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I would uh, like to be entertaining. Yeah, but it does look like if you take a look at Sky Bet League 2, where you actually finished in 19th, you were dropping down yeah. in and around December time. You signed that centre-back 
and it got better for you. Yeah. It was a good end of the season in the end uh, and safely finished above uh, relegation. The best thing for me is I finished above Exeter as well. Exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> too. yeah, I mean, first season in the Football League for Dover Athletic for you. 54 points, nothing to be snuffed at. Nope. Almost as many wins as you had losses. Not too bad of a goal difference there uh, for a first season. But yeah, you survived by a good 14 points. I think it was end. a good season. I was very pleased with that. Well, the lowest you were is 22nd. Yeah. So you were never in relegation. You were just in it around. But again, the third top scorer of the league in BT with yeah. 21. It's not bad for a nope. team that finished down in 19th. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's definitely something to build on next year to be one of these four clubs because this is one of the easier divisions to get out of with it being four clubs being able to be promoted yeah that's right yeah the league below obviously is harsher where it's only two to go down <laughs> yeah. it's it's a very strange football pyramid but there we go uh let's see who you bring in and build on uh, uh into the next season to get out of this division after sort of defense out dad focus on the attack to begin with as bria bateman come in on loan from birmingham the step up into the football league requires more than in the national league now for strikers such as a knack for being in the right place at the right time dad also looked for a ball winning midfielder this summer too where he found Ben Thompson on a free transfer. It hasn't actually been mentioned yet either, but the club also celebrated upgrading their training facilities. Being a bit more braver with the Christmas tree formation. Yeah. But I do like it, to be fair, because uh, the signings that you've brought in kind of complement what you're trying to go with, with Thompson being kind of that ball winner. I mean, the mental attributes and the physical attributes for this this division is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, very He's going to be the one who yeah. sweeps up the ball and, and helps push your team on Pedro the, the player that I bought last season he was a very good player I've got him more attacking now yeah and Ruff we know Ruff's good and I bought in his new striker he's very good yeah he's been scoring some goals for you I mean yeah. Ruff has been scoring some as well as you can already see and it's a lot of wins only one loss to a Derby County team who again is now in the Premier League I was pleased with that so that in yeah. bad at all it's only 3-0 only three nil. <laughs> yeah so you've got to be happy with that it was a good day out for the fans be an exer in the cup yes get in lovely stuff and in the league it's been very good for you dad so far this season uh, four wins just the one draw it's a great start Huddersfield find themselves down with you as well which yeah. you know they've had a couple of relegations they're probably going to be favourites to go up it's so whether you can find yourself in this gap here yeah definitely yeah. And i think you've put yourself in good contention to do just early that. days yeah the season preview though still has you as the worst yeah, they team don't like in the me, league do they? they don't like me do they defying the odds here dad yeah, they don't know omega dad he's a fighter exactly let's try and see if you can push yourself into these playoffs dover enjoyed some great football at the start of this season in league two and by january put themselves in a great position currently in third place with around 14 games to go which in this league is in fact an automatic promotion remember but he still needs to stay out of those playoff spots. Dad also made another January acquisition by bringing in Ben Middlemas as an upgrade in his midfield to increase the squad depth. But the form did drop off, and there was a worry that Dover would fall down the lead table. However, they held on to that automatic position of third, with Exeter right on their tails, just three points behind, but it definitely was close. There was a loss there to Exeter, Dad, yes. and that could have been oh, the end. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, I, I, it started a bad run for me, really. I won two games near, you know, in, in between, but all those draws, I just kept on dropping points, dropping points. And Exeter was the team that were chasing me. They were on you. Yeah. Yes. And they ended up getting promoted anyway through the playoffs. Uh, but you got automatic promotion. They finished three points behind you. Yeah. And you were kind of in a league of your own with Exeter for that part because Salford never really pushed to actually overtake you. No. Huddersfield and Cambridge above you were just way yeah, too I far ahead. I couldn't, I couldn't catch them, as you can see there. Like, yeah. I was third the majority of the season. Yeah. So, um, you know, I had that little bad spell. But lucky enough for me, Exeter were losing a couple of games as well even though they beat me they lost a couple of games and it was just allowing yeah. me to stay in that third position Dropping even though points. I was losing points yeah they drew their last game to Solihull Moors and lost the game before that to Forest Green Rovers yeah so I was lucky which they win either of those games <laughs> they, they, go, they go above you and yeah. knock you in the playoffs yeah. so they've done well to still get themselves promoted well done it's Skybet League One yes, next season for in. Dover Athletic after two seasons in the Skybet League Two, your reward is a not a bad old age budget, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the transfer budget, you kind of just ignore at these points because you're never spending any no, money. I'm it's just, just looking, bringing in free transfers. Looking for free transfers or, or loanies. Exactly. I mean, you're doing the right thing. You're bringing players in in January who can help your squad. Like yeah. this midfielder is a very good, squad good midfielder player. to bring yeah. in. I've got faith that you can survive 
in Skybet League One. Another season in a new league and Dad is flexing his Dover guns in the freebie and low market with some quality strikers. As well as Will Sweet who at centre back might be the signing of the summer so far for Dad and could be pivotal for this upcoming season. A change in formation too and the tactics seem to complement the new signings really well in this highest standard of football in League One. Another change of formation back yep. to the 4 triple two. Really going for it this year. Uh, Pedder stays in the team which is quite surprising. He's a good player though. Yeah, App Simon Sion is is getting a lot of goals for you so far. I was pleased to get hold of this guy, you know, young guy, um, got him in, so it was a good sign, and I felt your best sign is the centre back. Hundred percent. I was so pleased I got this guy in. I felt you know my defence is a lot better with just this one person being in there. Really, he's a ball player too. Yeah, I mean, you don't find him too often down no. in the lower leagues, but thirteen no. for passing with twelve vision, he's yeah. fantastic. And it's actually again you're defying the odds, Dad. Yeah, with the start of the season again, the two losses are cup games, which at this point we're not really too bothered with no Rotherham win 4-2 Oxford 4-2 one or draw against Bolton in the 94th at, minute at Bolton as well Better. that's a good result yep. Cambridge who of course walked the league last year yeah. it seems like every time you gain a promotion you play against the team that finished higher than you yeah. and then you just destroy them yeah. like just <laughs> casually beat them 2-0 with 10 men and then Morecambe 3-2 as well yeah. with an 89th minute winner from Rico Richards so it's again it's a it's fantastic start, start. Yeah. One of the other things I did find as well, that my players were moaning about the training facilities as well. So yeah. Training was no good. So I approached the board for it and, and the, asked them to sort of better improve the training. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Improve. And they, the board came forward straight away. Yeah, we'll improve, we'll improve. So they faith, they, yeah, they wouldn't give me any money, but they were improving the facilities I had. Yeah. So I was pleased with that. It's just whether eventually they can improve this. That was the problem, yeah. I don't know they're working. <laughs> yeah, not, not quite yet. No. But I mean, right now, if you look at your, your home fixtures that you're playing at, at the Crabble Athletic, I don't think you'll be like capping out yeah there, there is about 3,000 in yeah. a 5,000 seat so it's not going to be a priority just yet it's no. great gate receipts yeah but yeah it's not a priority just yet but good start though great start considering once again the season preview is mugging you off <laughs> in 24th position you keep don't know defying the odds I love being the underdog yeah I yeah love it one season away or one division away from being in the championship. Dad has certainly found the perfect formula immediately in Skypet League One, whether it was the new signings who all played a big part or the style of play. Because at one point, newly promoted Dover were pushing for the title and ended up the season in third place, which once again is the playoffs. However, a first leg defeat against Sheffield Wednesday and you wonder if his luck had run out this season. The second leg in Dover was a completely different story though and Dad's side were incredible on the day, scoring four goals without conceding one and cementing themselves in the playoffs final and another trip to Wembley Stadium and this time against Rotherham. New new at half time at Wembley and in the second half Dover started way better and even took the lead in the final through Rico Richards. But Rotherham wasn't going to just lay down and they equalised just five minutes later but there was still time for one more goal before the game went into extra time however it was a Dover goal and they were scored in the 95th minute meaning it was back-to-back -back promotions well you got to a point throughout the season where it kind of was like all right let's just accept that we're going to be in the playoffs Lincoln and Huddersfield was just doing really well they finally when they eventually overtook you you couldn't quite get there no. but what an end to the season well I was, I was like I said I was fighting for the playoff positions really and just trying to keep there really and um, it was looking dodgy at certain times but yep yeah, yeah. got there in the end got it I mean the the actual playoffs itself defeating Sheffield Wednesday after losing the first yeah. leg as well I couldn't believe my luck really to beat them what was it 4-0 in the second leg. That's a hell of a result. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Avoided playing Wrexham because Rotherham made it to the final. You'd already beat them at the start of the season. Yeah. It's 2-1 at Wembley. Once again, I like Wembley, don't winning I? at Wembley. Yeah. It's a shame you can't get to Wembley yeah, oh no, in yeah. the Papa John's Trophy after yeah. being knocked out by Millwall. But for now, we're not worried about those trophies. Nope. It's getting up the divisions and you're doing that very well. So far, you haven't even been in a in a league longer than two seasons nope. yet. This is only the first season in this I one. I just seem You've to be Got buying, out of it. Just seem to be buying the right player for the right positions to just get me through. But Bringing in the strikers up each time I'm improving my strikers to get, score the goals. Oh yeah, Apsion is, and that's, is that's what, great for you. Twenty-two yeah. goals this season. I mean, that's another great signing, really. Yeah, he's, he's done. He's done great. He's got twenty-seven across and the my whole lone season. The lone, lone league league got it. Yeah, 25. twenty-five. So you know, three players in the twenties. You can't ask for no more than no, that. No. You should be being promoted if you've got yeah. three players in the twenties. Yeah. This now is the hardest division. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of survival. Yeah. I always think the Van Rama National is the hardest to get out of. 
But this one is the hardest to survive in. Yeah, definitely. I think the Premier League is easier to survive in yeah. because you've got the money to actually buy the players. Championship, there's no money for you, but there's a lot of money coming down. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So that's the hardest for me, in my opinion. So I am really intrigued to see what you do this summer. The, the board are backing me, though. They're giving me 1.87 million. Look. Yeah, but compared to the teams coming down, <laughs> that's, that's just pennies. That's wages they got there for exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> After many seasons of getting the transfers right, I thought Dad had gone mental with what he was spending stupid amounts of money on. With another 500k being spent on a very poor defender and 350k on Cam Bragg. An okay, I guess, midfielder. I thought he'd rely on a lot more loans like he did with Steven Vince, who wasn't a bad player from Norwich. But then I realised how many players Dad actually approached and tried to loan to Dover with none of them actually wanting to make the move to the south coast. But I do have to question, what is going on with this tactic? I'll be honest, Dad, I think you're going to be relying on your defence this year round. <laughs> You've brought in some great defenders. Will Sweet, of course, was already here, but yeah. bringing in Barker to go next Never to him, one, yeah. that's a very good defensive yeah. uh, pickup. Your goalkeeper's decent. I'm not sure you've got the goals going forward. That's the trouble. I mean, the goals that, if you go by best 11, they're on the bench yeah. right now in, in Hadal, uh, who's got eight so far this season. And yeah, you've been doing all right in the games. You know, Cambridge, that's a good win in the cup. But in the championship, the first game you have was a loss. Birmingham, good win. Yeah. That is a good win. Fantastic. Crystal Palace is I a surprise. In, uh, like, I think I, I think that's a victory, draw. really. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good draw. Yeah, yeah. Cardiff, good 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Fulham, bit of a battering. Yeah. Watford again in the cup, group went on pens, and Ipswich, I'm like, how are you pulling this off? I'm still not quite sure how you're managing to do it, because again... I think I've just I've just filled the midfield player, uh, midfield with just, you know, and, yeah. and, and hopefully just fill it too much, and no, it's hard to get past me type of thing, you know? The odds I know are I've got, so against you, oh, it's unreal. Be. I know I've got a good defence, yeah. so I'm, I'm literally really relying on what I do when I do break. There are some massive clubs in the Championship, yeah, definitely. Yeah, three hundred and fifty so. to one. I mean, I'm, I Great still class myself. I'm still building. Like you said, this are, this this league is all about survival in this league. Yeah. And then once you feel that you've got a good enough squad, then you go for it. And, that, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build the squad. Yeah. So that's but you're not I'm... having the the opportunity to loan any players from the Premier League uh, sides. They're not wanting no, to come to you. They just did not want to come to me. I was, that's what I was open for more than anything. Really, was to get a, a really good young striker young through. striker or something like that come from the, the the Premier League and then really help you, but not interested at nothing all. all right well let's see if you can get any through the january and see if you can eventually survive this season included a lot of change in facilities as the training facilities was upgraded and plans for stadium upgrades meant moving temporarily but dover on the pitch experienced a very difficult year in the championship as kind of expected occasionally though squeezing out miracle results against the top half of the table that could be make a break for the season and survival not once did dad stay long in the top half of the table but also never went lower than 20th position and stayed away from relegation scraps but it was the performances in the EFL League Cup that was the most shocking thing from this season. Although surviving the championship is the number one target, yeah. getting to the quarterfinal with the Carabao Cup. Yeah, I've, only, I've had a good cup run, really. I mean, yeah. all right, only towards the quarterfinal, but hey, I'll take that quarterfinal against Man City. 2-1 loss to Man City Bringing well. Man City to the big home ground of mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Will Sweet getting a goal as well. Yeah. They had to, they, you, I mean, you actually went 1-0 up. Oh, <laughs> Making That's the order to do with the team talk. See, so, yeah, I sent them out there on that new team talk, look, and bang, they're in. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. But as we say, that was a nicety to happen. The main thing was survival. You managed to do that. Yeah. You stayed away from the relegation zone. Yeah, I did, it yeah. I was consistently in about that position for the whole season, really. Yeah. You were seven points ahead of Swansea and Notts County uh, and Lincoln, who went down. But it was the fact that you managed to just stay yeah. away from it altogether. The lowest you dropped was 20th. You had a bad end of the season. Yeah, I did, yeah. But it was kind of like you were already safe by then. Yeah, I mean, everybody below me were all having bad ends of season anyway. Yeah. So I was safe because they were all losing as well. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the you know the mid the mid game you're just picking up. I mean now it's like September there. Yeah. You actually had a really good run, and, and even into December, you know you won four or well, three games in the championship, yeah. which is not bad for a team that's supposed to be scrapping. I for survived, but it, it shows me that really that that tactic, the defending tactic, is probably not working in this league. So yeah. Oh, if you wanted to progress, I mean it kept you, gotta, you up. Yeah, you got to go on yeah. And I think that shows in the goals. Yeah. Seventeen goals by one player, and then eight in the next. I mean, yeah. Stephen Vince is a very good low need to bring in yeah but it's kind of like you're, you're just leaving them up there 
and then nobody's really supporting. Rico Richards has a high amount of assists, but how far can that take you? Yeah. Uh, so I think, yeah, maybe I survived next season... again, so it's, I've got a better squad now. I'm yeah. building a good squad, so I've just got to improve on that again now. Yeah, and all the players that you've brought in that have been young, they're starting to, you know, Max Barker, he's developing well. Yeah. And that's the thing. These are your players that you're keeping in this league. You haven't got a, a bunch of loan signings, which... Might be the way to go for promotion. I'm, I don't, don't get me wrong, mate. I'm yeah. trying. They just took they would, yeah. they would not come to me. But so for now, it's good to have all these players as your players yeah. because then you know, or if I don't get promotion, at least they're going to stick around for yeah, next year. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, on to the next season where hopefully you can capitalize on that survival. Compared to last summer, Dad had a far better recruitment strategy, finding gems like this Polish striker for such a cheap cost. And he had far better luck when it came to using the loan market. Market, bringing in very talented attacking threats and an incredible right back from Chelsea. But I was still really worried about dad's tactic that he was trying to use. To me, it seemed far too open and too attack minded, leaving the defence to themselves against the better teams. This is your best chance window yet. By far. By I've got, it, I've got some really good players in this time. Bought players as well that were yeah. good, but also I've got a couple of good loanies as well. So this this season, I felt I was right up for it this season. Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. I mean, yeah. the guy that you got for 120k oh, is an absolute steal. Complete my luck getting this guy. What a striker He's this guy can be good. for me. 19 years old from yeah. Poland. Five goals Fantastic. in six games already, look. Yeah, he's been doing the business in Poland and you've picked him up for such a cheap cost as yeah. well. Uh, but all of the signings that you've made all make a big difference and the, the three Fin loans that you've yeah, got Yeah, I finally got some lone E players from, from a Premier League side team as well, so Sunderland I mean, he's good. Striker. Yeah. This is a very good attacking midfielder, one yeah. of the best in the division now, and then the right oh, back right from back. Chelsea. This guy's amazing, only 18, yeah. 19, so yeah, what a signing that was as well. And going back to a 4-3-1-2 narrow formation, yeah. I like the fact that we've got these two deadly strikers playing next to each other with Liberali in behind. Yeah. You've got some supporting on the side there. Yeah. My only concern is it's too attacking. Yes, yeah. Because we've seen previously yeah. how the defensive style didn't necessarily work in terms of promotion, but it helped you yeah. uh, survive. And I think that does show in the schedule because we've got a couple of losses in here against when you look teams at, that are big teams. Yeah, that's the thing. I was losing against these big teams. I think, well, all right. I'll take it. Yeah. Maybe that might be a problem, but the teams that are in and around your level, I would say now, because you have developed yeah. into a, uh, a good team for the championship. 6-2 win there, 5-1. It's been great. Uh, even Southend in the Cup, 5-2 and a Crystal Palace win's great. That's great, yeah. But yeah, a, a draw to Southampton just goes to show the possibility of it. But these two losses, it's like, yeah, you need to be careful yeah, because you can pick yeah. up. Because you got Aston Villa in the Cup, Next game, you've got some huge clubs that have dropped down from the Premier League that are in the Championship, and even some, I mean, Bromley in the Championship, some surprise yeah. packages as well. With Bromley in there, are you still last? Predicted to finish last? I think this is the first time you haven't <laughs> yeah. been. The newly promoted side in Bromley is yeah. coming up with Plymouth Argyle and, and Millwall. So, yeah, let's let's see how you do, because I think this season is definitely your best summer for signings. I just worry about that tactic. Yeah. My worries for Dad's system might have been justified as against the weaker or equal than two sides, Dover Athletic were deadly at times and punished teams with free flow and attacking football. But every now and then, they would be tonked like this 8-0 loss to a much stronger team. Dover scored the second highest amount of goals in the league with 97 ahead of Champions Derby, but they conceded the second highest with 92 but at least it was entertaining football. Imagine being there to see the 8-4 win over Coventry, for example. But for Dad's title hopes, it wasn't the best system to run with, unfortunately. I think my prediction may have been slightly correct. Yeah. Goal difference of just plus five. Yeah. 13th position, never really made a push for the playoffs uh, as when it mattered. I started losing at the end of the season again, then I just dropped yeah. down again. So, yeah. And third round of both cups. I was happy with the two cups. Harder bit, clubs. Two big teams, yeah, yeah. So The goal scorer did quite well. He was the top scorer of the league with yeah. the highest average range, surrounded by Bournemouth players, in fact. So, yeah, he did really well. He's yeah, he developed did, yeah. quite nicely across the season as well, the Polish player that you got in. 25 goals in 36 games with 11 assists. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's mental. Yeah. Just wish you went a little bit more defensive. And, and the other striker I bought in on, on loan, he's the other guy who was doing well as Jack well for Sarah, me. Yeah, yeah, 19. So. Two good strikers though, I felt. Yeah. So I'm all right going forward now, so maybe I've just got to just tweak it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just tweak out defence yeah. slightly. Young and maybe, a lot I, like you said, maybe I played just my midfielders are too, too attacking in the midfield, I felt. Yeah. Brought in a lot of coaching staff yeah. though, even I, bringing in... Well, the players are managing Foster. 
the players were mani- uh, moaning to me that the training sessions weren't very good and that's so why I thought in a new coach he may not be a good manager mm. but I know he's a good coach he took the under 18s or 19s England team and won the World Cup yeah. so I know he's a good coach so yeah I brought him in Pierce, uh, Nigel Pearson as well yeah, director of football. football so changing the staff around me as well so I've got a lot of help coming in my way as well upgrading the training facilities yeah. as we so, go along yeah they weren't interested in upgrading the ground no no that's well the capacity <laughs> has gone up to 8,000 yeah, yeah. compared to 5 I think, I think we've got those renter seats in that you just put on the sides yeah <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, the the home grounds, they, they are bringing in a little bit more fans. Yeah. So, but it's putting in the groundwork for a potential Premier League That's season. right, yeah. Yeah, because that's a big shock when you yeah. go there, yeah. This summer saw another classic Omega Dad masterclass in recruitment, bringing in some quality free transfers, including the lad he loaned from Cardiff last season. He also brought in Dean Henderson in goal as well, who is now 34 years of age. But the signing of the season has to be... Bradley Williams from Chelsea. Only 18 years of age, but he is an absolute megastar striker that could be huge for Dad's promotion push. And within a new system that supports defence and attack, the results are already speaking for themselves. And Bradley Williams is getting himself on the score sheet. Very promising start to the season. What a season. start of season this is, yeah. Really pleased with this. My, I did improve my team this season. Oh, and, God, yeah. And like you said, I had to change my tactics, so I've done that as well. So, um, really Gone good start. Got a little bit more defensive. Got yep. a ball winner in there. Love that. Deep line playmaker yeah. on support. Obviously, your two good centre-backs are in there. Even bringing in... I mean, you've brought oh. in a, goal, a new goalie every season. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. goalkeeping coach has just been like another one. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, but the I've, players I've that you've I've brought in it. better. I, yeah. I, you know, and I've, you, you have got to have a good keeper. Yeah. I always say that in all my videos, and I always yeah. look for a goalkeeper. And I felt he was a well-experienced goalkeeper. Brought him in. He's going to be right beyond those two young lads there. Couldn't ask for a better keeper, really, to back be honest to with you. Back-to-back, very good transfer yeah. windows. The players that you managed to keep in Liberali, who, of yeah. course, was on the really you last season. Yeah. Yeah. For 350 k oh, he's already got two goals, three assists. Signing. Great signing. I mean, it doesn't feel like it is a signing because it's one of the players that you've had before, but... Yeah, it's one of them. It's still a, still a good yeah. signing, I feel. But losing him is worse, isn't but it? So you've got to hit this guy here. That That's I could the best not, player in the division. I just thought I'd do a cheeky offer to Chelsea and they let me have him and I thought I yeah. couldn't believe my luck. Yeah. Bradley Williams, what a player this is going to be for me. 18 years of age, three goals, three assists already yeah. this season. And if you look at the championship, you're kind of thinking... Is he going to be up there? He's not even classed as a Dream 11. And no. I'm like, what? Yeah. You're still predicted to finish 23rd. Ah, get on. They don't know what they're talking about. I don't get it. I mean, Bromley <laughs> also survived. Well done to them. But I, yeah, I have no idea how when you have this team. Obviously, the tactic is a little bit strange because usually you just have the diamond. Yeah. But it works in the way that it's asymmetric. Well, I've got Brad going to the left as well. So, you yeah. know, and, and then you've got the sort of ball the winning midfield right behind good. him as well. So, yeah. All right. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with this team. I felt like, you know, I mean, it proves that from the start of the season. Yeah, I'm I've really done, excited done really to see well. how this goes on because you only really dropped points in the league to Reading. There. Yeah. The loss was in the cup to Brentford, who yeah. in the league above. So, it's not too bad at all. It's a great start of the season. They're only dropping yeah. two points. My, my next game is... I come home to Plymouth. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Exciting times. Let's see what happens. Yep. I'm still shocked at how good Bradley Williams is as he torments the whole of the championship with a lot of goals. And, in fact, both strikers for this Dover team scored above 20 this season. The difference is this time round is that Dean Henderson conceded the third least amount of goals in the league also. And despite results looking inconsistent, Dab was fighting for second position right the way to the end of the season. However, it was a very resilient Bournemouth side who fought down right to the final day of the season for that automatic promotion spot with a little help from their fantastic striker as well. Bournemouth really took it to you this oh, season. Oh, they were right on my ass all the way. They Five were... wins there, yeah. or six wins, sorry, in their last seven games. Yeah. A lot of pressure. They yeah. eventually went up as well, but you got it, Dad. Yes. Automatic promotion. Get in. Second place behind Southampton, who kind of run away with it a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, you, you had to do well. And your end of the season wasn't the best, no, it wasn't. but it was just <laughs> enough. <laughs> That last game of the season against Luton, 5-0. Yeah. Oh, that's just a relief to win that game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when the first one goes in the eighth minute, you're like, yeah. oh, come on. Right, yeah, okay, we're definitely, all good. Yeah. Because there's a couple of ropey ones here, obviously losing to the champion Southampton, yep. but then the loss to Stoke, drawing to Everton who were in the cha- in the championship playoffs. Yeah. Uh, so they were the one who lost to Bournemouth in the final there. Yeah, that is a, it's a great occasion really for the club because again, you're second for half the season, yep. top for the other half. Yeah, so brilliant season. Yeah, once well, Southampton took over, it was kind of, that was it. But yeah. Bournemouth were right behind you the whole time. I was chasing Southampton so well. all the way, but I couldn't, nowhere near catching them really yeah. so Williams just off 
of the top scorer of the league. Yeah. Somehow this man managed to get one more. I mean, he is amazing, to be fair. He's yeah. actually contracted to Sheffield Wednesday as well. But you had the other striker in there as well, 23. You even had Yusuf Makoko to deal with in this division. I mean, what the hell is he doing in the championship? <laughs> yeah. But you are in the Premier League next hey, year. I just couldn't believe it. Bradley Williams, what a signing that was for me, a loan signing. Great loan signing. Um, and my striker beside him as well. That's yeah. what makes it even better. It was my own striker. At the yeah, same yeah. It, yeah, because so, then you don't have to replace both of them yeah. going into the I next mean, my year. two centre backs as well, really good centre backs as well. Yeah. So most of the team is my team. So And you've been given £28 million of a good wage budget yeah. to do something next year. Three star training facilities, let's bump that up. Let's yeah. see if we can get a bigger capacity <laughs> at the Crabble Off Lake ground. No, they weren't doing it. Because it's Premier League football. <laughs> for the 10th season let's see what happens that's right it's time to play with the big boys now in the premier league for dad's little dover team and somehow dad managed to secure bradley williams for another season on loan from chelsea and he is banging in goals to celebrate the only real transfer dad spent big money on was ronnie edwards an english center back who still only cost 7.5 million pounds. Instead, it was back to focusing on free signings and just using the money available to pay for wages for the better players. I really thought, however, that Dad's new tactic was far too ballsy for the Premier League in season number one, but I was proved very wrong. I don't know how you're pulling it off, but you somehow are. Mate, our first game of the season against Villa, I thought, my God, 6-1. That is I mental. just could not believe this. But I mean, you can see there right from the, the, one of the goal scorers, Bradley, Bradley Williams. Williams. I re-signed him. Yeah. Managing to get him for another season yeah, from I can't Chelsea. Believe my luck. I, I've just thought, Huge. try and look again, and they let me have him again. I yes. thought, well, I'm having a bit of that. I mean, who the hell have Chelsea got up front? Because this oh. makes no sense. Pochettino's still there. They've got Lois Appender uh, up front. I'd I mean, he's rather play Bradley yeah, Williams. I mean, he's 32. Bradley Williams yeah. is 1920. I'd rather so be playing come on, Bradley you know? Williams, if I'm honest, because <laughs> he is a far better player than Lois Appender right now. Because look at that. 18 for pace, 17 agility, 17 heading and finishing. Yeah. And he's been absolutely incredible for you already. Yeah. Nine goals in the in Premier League games. in four games. <laughs> what a start, eh? After 27 last season. What a signing that is. That yeah, is the most yeah. important signing that you have made. 100%. I mean, even your own signing, the Polish guy that you've brought in, yeah. He's, he's done exceptionally well. He scored three goals in four appearances yeah. in the Premier League already. And I brought another striker in as well. You did, yeah. Will Lankshire. Yeah. On a free. Yeah. And it's a good one too. He likes to beat the offside trap. It's fantastic stuff. He's got three goals too. And that has meant that you've had to kind of play all three of them. Definitely. That's what you've done. Yeah. And normally I'd be going, oh, that's a little bit risky well, in the Premier League. That's what I looked at. I thought, well, I've got three. What I'd class is world-class strikers really get them in the team and see what happens yeah why we not? know if you play in the premier league and you play defensive you're going to be crucified you get punished yeah, yeah absolutely so i thought well let's just go for it and see what happens yeah i mean you've brought in a good center back as well yeah. to go alongside sweet and ronnie edwards and my center midfielder player what a player that was signed. this, is, another good, this is, is a good signing such as well a good player. yeah uh, just, uh, just on a, a rock in there really i felt... didn't really spend money in no the, in the transfer window there's 11 million pound there really in total but we know uh, we know from past experience that it's it's wages yeah yeah as yes. soon as you start bringing in a load of players, now I had to get a bigger squad. You've got to have yeah. a big squad. Yeah. So I got a few in, uh, and goes on the wages. So. Might be a really smart move. Yeah, I'm learning. Temp season first in the Premier League for Dover Athletic. Let's see if you can survive because right now you're in sixth place. <laughs> yeah. It's all gravy. Let's where, see what where, happens. Where did they predict I was going to finish this? Oh time? yeah, I mean, I, I, I wonder. Oh, I'm down the bottom again. A thousand to one this time round. <laughs> Mate, I'm going to put, I'm going to put high. money on me to win this league. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Let's see. I honestly couldn't believe what I was seeing as this Dover side continued to surprise the far more established Premier League teams. And by the turn of the new year, they were sat in 8th place in the Premier League with a chance of European football next season. But the most shocking thing was the Carabao Cup run, knocking out Manchester United, Chelsea on penalties, and then Leeds in the semi-final. So with the cup final on the horizon, Dad started wheeling and dealing during January, managing to sign four more players to help do the unthinkable and win a major trophy. So off to Wembley we go against Newcastle, and as we know, Dad's record here is good with Dover, and he took the lead through Will Lancashire. Second half, though, and Newcastle found their feet and a goal from a deflection by Lewis Miley. But upset, Trasher asked direct from a free kick to blast into the Newcastle net and win the Carabao Cup for Dover. Over. And what made it even better was the goal came in the 94th minute. I mean, you can't complain with that. What First a season, major eh? trophy. What a season that is, mate. Carabao Cup, Newcastle in the final, 2-1 win. Happy days. I mean, I, I think, I feel I was a little bit lucky, but I'll take it because I, 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 
went through the rounds and I didn't really pick anybody up in the top five. Yeah, yeah. And I think they must have all knocked each other out because each time I was going the next round, it was just like... Well, you're not that Man United. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Quarter-final Chelsea. Ooh. You've been harshing yourself, really. Then yeah. Leeds was the semi-final. I think that's what it was. The semi-final and the final. I got two teams there. I thought, well, where's the big guns? Yeah, yeah. Where's, where's Brighton? Yeah. Where's Man City? That thing, you know? So, yeah. People are going to be like, sorry, Brighton won the Premier League. And it's not the first time it's happened because they've actually been in a bit of a dominant spell. Yeah. They've won three of the last four. Marco Rolls is up the helm and they've got a guy called Gary Dawson. I mean, who's naming their kid Gary <laughs> to be 25 in 2033? I don't know, but he is one of the best players in the world. Yeah. And one of the best strikers in the world, an England international. Uh, so that's the reason why they are doing so well. But dad, Europa League football next year, a Carabao Cup winner as well. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. I couldn't believe the can't thing. complain about couldn't that. Couldn't believe it. I mean I was there or thereabouts all season as well, I think. So yeah. um it's good good season. I couldn't believe how well I've done really. Yeah, your past position after dropping off from that top yeah. spot, you you survived Up and down, really, in there. that you never went into the bottom half of the no. table. So I I was happy all the season really because I I knew I wasn't under pressure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we know the Carabao Cup is in February, the final. Yeah. So do you have that in the bag early on as well? I thought, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's can only get, on can only get better then. Yeah, so definitely, yeah. Two strikers got 25 and 20 goals, 18 for Will Lankshire there. Yeah. You even brought in a backup to, in the in the January. There was one coming from Inter Milan there. Yeah. A good pickup there for quite a cheap cost. So straight away, you already had... Like I was a bit worried. Eyes on next year. Well, I was a bit worried as well because the three main strikers I got, they're all, they're all playing. Yeah. So if I've got an injury, I'm bugger then. Yeah, yeah. So I've got one in, in already, like you say, for next season as well because I don't think I'll be able to get Bradley Williams again for the third season. And speaking of next season, you have £40 million, but that is where this video ends. And I know what you're all thinking. No, we're so close to the <laughs> precipice of what Dover Athletic can do. But in ending on a Carabao Cup win and putting into Europe won't be the final end. It's just the end for this video. Now, Patreon members, you can take over the save. And channel members, you can take over the save. Patreon.com forward slash Megaloop Gaming. Or click in the join YouTube button as the join membership and you'll get the access to the safe game file which maybe you want to try this tactic out i don't know but see what you can do in the next five years because that is exactly what myself and my dad will be doing against each other five seasons and that will be coming out in a couple of weeks time to see who can do better so you got a couple of weeks Athletic you got time. a couple of weeks to try it take it on and then let us know you got on and then see if you we can beat that as well absolutely and just from doing the Patreon or supporting on the channel memberships allows Dad to have the time to yeah, be here you. to do it. Uh, so we really appreciate that. That pays for Dad's wages. So you are helping us as well as having a little bit of fun and trying out some fun tactics that Dad has created there. So in a couple of weeks' time, we will reconvene against each other for this Dover Athletic side. So... Make sure you check that one out. But thank you very much. Make sure you check out manscaped.com and use code OMEGA for that 20% off and free shipping. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, buy some tickets to come watch yeah. us at the wrestling. And push that button for the subscribe button. Let's get some more subscribers back button. up again. Yeah, yeah. We need come to get on. That pushing up as much as we possibly can. Thank you very much. Check out this video right now where I put Messi in the other worst team in England.